brackets are looking like. Just to have a look at who's, uh, how these guys got this far already. So, um, patience so far. He's uh, coming from the bottom half of the bracket. He's uh, had a pretty clear run. He's taking a walk over in the round of 120. He took down a Polish player called Dave in the round of 64. In the round of 32, he took down Shadye, Shady. Uh, in the round of 16, he took down Shaq, 2-0. In the round of eight, he took down Lurolis 2-0, and now he plays against Grave. So, patience yet to drop a map. Grave, he's had a bit of a tougher run, maybe. I mean, patience run have been pretty hard. Shady and uh, Shaq, and obviously Lurolis, very good players. Um, but I mean, Grave's taken down Pink from Fnatic. He's taken down Psionic uh, as well. He was saw earlier. He's taken down Jacko. And uh, he must have taken down someone a little bit early on too. Uh, took down Dolph Potato, who used to do quite good in one of the qualifiers previously. So you can't actually see anything because I went to press this button, not uh, this button. But um, anyway, now we're getting in game. Uh, uh, I, I'm lost everywhere. Wow, well, so uh, that went probably as badly as it could have done. But here we are right now, 0-0 zero, zero in this best of three between the Protoss player in the upper right hand corner. The Teal Protoss. Grave representing ESC game. And in the lower left hand corner, the pink Protoss player, the new recruit to Alien Invasion. Is he going to make a splash here on what I think is his debut for Alien Invasion? I, I believe. But do not quote me on that. It's patience. Of course, a very high finisher at uh, Dreamhack Winter. Showed us a big number of different, uh, a big variety of builds. You no, know, he showed us a few different builds. Uh, he wasn't scared to all in. He wasn't scared to play macro against the best people around. So um, he's definitely someone to be a little bit scared of. And I mean, he's a Korean. Which Koreans can't you? Which Koreans aren't you scared of? Like, I mean, we've got Tassadar already in the round of uh, four. He's going to be playing against Adonis, which means uh, we are going to be seeing in a PvP 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 finals uh, little session. As we get this game underway, so much uh, Protoss building is going on. Three in each gas for patients right now as he throws down his cybernetics core. Two in each gas right now for Grave. So, uh, slight differences early on in these builds. As guys, you'd probably be very excited to know I have but two and a half hours left of being a teenager. It's very scary. Very scary indeed. It's um, it's almost as though I'm growing up and doing things with my life. Only I'm not going anywhere. In the chat, we've got some cheers for patience. Go, 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 patience from our black box and melt. Uh, sorry, is that that's not melt? That's Mike. Go, patience as well from Mike. So uh, shout out to you guys who are looking to um, support um, thingy with Bobby here. What do I mean by thingy, my Bobby? Um, patience is what I'm looking for. The word I'm looking for. Patience, uh, not really doing anything with all of his gas just yet. He's actually just going to be expanding with the sentries. So, very fast expand here on this large map. And we see a one gate blink play out of Grave. So, it could be blink, it could be a rush to DTs as well. Either or. In fact, I get the feeling it very well might be DCs as uh, Patience now also throws down Twilight Council of his own. So, what does Patience go for? Does Patience go for st uh, a Blink Stalkers? Or does he go for the DTs as well? Well, it looks as though it will be DTs from Grave, unless he's just not got the gas just yet. No, he does have the gas. There he is. DT trying up in the top side of the map is. Um, Dark trying the top side of his base, sorry. Is. Um, <clears throat> on the way down now, and what's Patience going to do? Because Patience is going to throw down a Dark Shrine as well. We've got DT against DT. Ah, how fantastic! Thing is, Graves got a row of Sildi already on the way. His DTs are faster. Uh, Patience, he's got a Nexus on the way. So, if he gets his own D, uh, robotics of Sildi up sometime soon, which it looks like he might put down over here because he's hiding all of his tech in this little corner to try and deny the scout. And yes, it will be. It will be that robot facility coming down. And you know, I really like this because this robot facility is actually very hard to hit. It's kind of limiting the surface area on it. If, if he suddenly sees DTs running here, he adds a pile on here. He can buy so much more time for his uh, robotics to actually get an observer out. So 
little things like that, always little things to consider here in uh, PvP, especially at high levels, they do these little things that sometimes do an amount of nothing. You know, I could just be talking rubbish, he might just put it there because the rest of his text there because he wants to hide it, but every little thing will count at this kind of level of play as a single DT is warped in from Grave, he's starting to expand, and now for the first time in this game he sees his opponent has an expansion already out. And patience, does he see the DT? Yes, he does! And, um, well, that DT is going to be able to get a single probe kill, but not too much else because uh, Patience has already uh, reforfield that ramp and he's getting his uh, observer on the way. Another probe going to get uh, stuck and killed off, so two probe kills, but of course a much faster nexus for Patience compared to uh, Grave, who is uh, just defending DTs of his own as well right now, I believe. Um, yes, uh, DTs of Patience right now, just being defended and... Uh, this DT gonna get, ooh, it actually gets a kill, ah, no, it's swiped twice, but it actually didn't kill anything, this DT's been killed over here, that DT only actually killed one worker, but it looked as though it should have killed a couple more, so, um, overall, yeah, I mean, Patience actually lost a little bit more, he walked in an extra DT, he lost a couple extra workers, in the end of the day, it's not completely game-changing, a time warp goes down to catch this DT and force field, so he's really desperate to kill off this DT, and he's not gonna get it, so what a waste. Time Warp and the Force Field to uh, let the DT just get away there in the end. A little bit of a miscalculation, you could say, out of patience. As uh, Grave will just retreat this DT and use that for later in the game. Still got plenty of pylons up in this bottom side of the map to be used for aggression. Patience currently sitting at a full worker lead. As Grave starts to take his double gas, Patience already with his double gas up as well, which is pretty important to know. That means his future tech will have always be that slight bit faster. And there's that tech choice. It's going to be the Robo Bay Forge on the way at similar timings for both players. So pretty even in that respect compared to that last game that Grave played against Pink, where he always had that plus one advantage. So pretty even upgrades is going to be the name of the game here. Uh, Patience already with two Immortals out. Is having to deal now with a war prison playing with this DT in the main and uh, just get a couple more kills here. So, Patience does fall uh, behind uh, just a little bit now uh, on the work account by about two. Um, so, just you know, the ever so slightest damage done because of that, and another rare uh, DT deflected at the front. And the choice to go Colossi, I feel, is interesting. It's uh, a very large open map, and I think if Grave goes for, say, Templar, uh, for just Archon Immortals. I just think that composition does so well right now because you can spread out so well. Say if they have a fight anywhere, just you say here, in an open space, you know, Archon Immortals with a concave is going to do so much better than a ball with Colossi in it. And especially with time orbs, you can drop the time orbs and these immortals then close in on them Colossi so quickly and take it down. Of course, it all comes down to how their engagement goes, so we'll just keep an eye on what exactly is going to happen, but right now we do see just continued DTs being warped in for Grave and Immortal on the way as well, continuing to produce those and uh, that plus one and the charge also coming up. Oh. See these couple of units just moving around ever so slightly. No, uh, just being careful before they uh, do anything. Grave won't want to attack just yet. I mean, he doesn't have the infrastructure to really support an attack. Only on three gateways at this point. Uh, you know, it's just not enough where warping is available to do what you'd want to do. And I am kind of getting a little bit worried about patience. I mean, we see another warp prism harassment coming in here. The stalkers completely miss it, and DT is actually going to drop off to try and uh, kill off this cannon, and it will manage to kill off, be killed off. However, there is an observer here as well. Phone overcharge used once again. This warp prism harassment is actually doing quite a lot for Grave. As uh, the one DT now goes down, uh, it looks as though the war prism is still under attack here. These stalkers aren't going to be able to chase that down, but uh, we'll be able to uh, kill off that other DT as well. Now, 13 workers killed from uh, Grave, so doing a good job continuously harassing here. Very even uh, uh, money spent on either side as well, though. As Grave's going to start taking his third base, still no real tech other than just these immortals up for him. His uh, charge lots, of course, have finished upgrading, and he will be able to move into a uh, plus two attack if he would like to right now. He's going to go into a Stargate as well, which is something we saw him also do against Pink, especially when he saw that he was playing against Colossi. So this could be just Grave's way to answer Colossi, going Stargate, getting out of some void rays, getting out of some uh, Tempests even. and um, seeing where it goes from there. Let's 
to see again DT coming in and harassing and trying to pick off this cannon once again here. Just as Patience has moved out on the map, so great timing here by Grave. He's going to do a lot of economic damage. In fact, this whole mineral line is starting to die. Patience is just uh, going to let it happen. He's just going to move across the map at the same time. His own war prism is coming in, doing a little bit of damage here with some zealots, with some immortals of his own. But he's lost so many units. He sent a Colossi back to defend, and uh, he's going to have to use this... Uh, well, I mean, I don't know if he can pull back. He's lost so much. His opponent also has a third base up. Patience is really uh, messing this up a little bit. These TTs are wreaking havoc here in the um, natural because there's no uh, detection. And, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, the army comes back for Patience, but he's lost so many workers now. 42 throughout the game. And Grave is in a fantastic position here in game number one. A third base up for him. An economic advantage in terms of work count. It's just, it's just crazy, really. And again, we actually have harassment still going on in the main base, dropping uh, uh, the count even lower. Forty-seven workers now killed here, and uh, patience really seemed to just fall apart a little bit. Yet to drop a map in the tournament. Yet here we are, with um, grave kind of just picking them apart. Thirty supply advantage overall. The army supplies are very even right now. As Patience gets away with one of his immortals, looks as though another one of them has uh, actually died off at some point. But no real damage done by Patience with this. I mean, Grave hasn't lost any workers to it, and that's what Patience really needs to catch up on. He's going for one big fight now. He does have a lot more army supply. He does have plus two as well against just plus one. But he's got two Colossi and one immortal against four immortals and an Archon. So, five immortals and an Archon. So, the composition, the, the tech units are just higher and better for Grave. Patience is just going for this all in. He's used his charge on the extractor, which probably isn't the best uh, idea here. Moving back just a little bit, hallucinates a couple of Colossi. There is an observer here, though, so they can be spotted. The third Colossi is here. Archon's morphing in as well. This is the attack Patience needs to win this game with at this point. There's not much else he can do past this. Um, once he, uh, if he loses this fight, he doesn't win up this fight. He's way too far behind on the economy to keep this up. He will take out the third base here initially, so a good start for him. How does Grave decide to fight this? He's now got six Immortals out. And uh, he's got them Archons as well. And uh, Patience, he's going to run up the ramp, but the Colossi have to be so careful. The, uh, the Immortals initially taking a few free hits here. This Colossi range is very useful. This Archon might go down for free. A Tempest comes out, and this may change the tide of the fight. The Hallucinated Colossi now disappearing. This Tempest still tar looking to target down them Colossi. One Colossi almost ready to die. The Archons in the front here get absolutely destroyed for Patience, and the Immortals just wreck the Colossi as well. Patience. Has absolutely nothing remaining, I don't think. Although that being said, he's still taking down some of these units. The army supplies are still very even, and he's actually still got an Archon here and a Colossi, which I didn't actually see that Archon for a little bit. And he will be able here just to pick out them zealots, but now he has to keep moving forward and keep being aggressive, and he just cannot. And he's 50 supply down, and uh, DTs and zealots are actually shutting down his reinforcements. He doesn't have any economy left at all, really, and patience just really fell apart to this Dark Templar harassment from the start of this, from kind of the middle of this game. The starts were very nice for Patience, I think, but the DT harassment was continuous by Grave. He got this Warp Prism out. Patience never really used his Dark Shrine past the first two Dark Templar. Main base falls and Patience just kind of coming to grips with his loss right now and loads his units just to get whatever free damage he can get done. And uh, these DTs, yes, they'll go down in the end here, but not before they kill off absolutely everything they can. And um, the Grave is still actually microing around with this zealot here, just being fancy with this war prison. As you can see, the resources lost are actually incredibly even. The problem is, though, for the longest of times now, Grave has been on 60 workers and Patience has been on basically none. It's 57 workers have actually been killed throughout the whole of the game, and now. Grave is pulling together his army for one big push to finish off the game and take a 1-0 advantage. Many people did not expect him to be taken of all people in this semi-final. So Grave playing extremely well here. Making a name for himself, saying, Hey Patience, you come to Europe, I'm not just going to let you take all that money that easily. And um, Grave getting ready to move into this natural right now. As... Uh, We'll actually just move to the south first, and uh, he's going to end up just taking down this pylon. Not 
too much of an issue. But more tempers warping in, others out warping in. There's just nothing here to defend for patience, guys. And it's a bit of an anticlimactic ending when it ends uh, about 10 minutes after it actually should have ended. But Grave being extremely respectful of his opponent and um, just not doing anything, just uh, just waiting for Throne Overchuck to dissipate. He knows he's got an advantage, he knows he doesn't need to rush it. There's a bit of a harassment coming all over here with some warp prison, but. It's not enough to really even things up. I mean, it's just ridiculous. 